Um, so my name is Steven Lieb and I am a professor here in two different departments, uh, electrical engineering and computer science and also mechanical engineering. Uh, I guess I'm a full professor so that means I've been all the way to the end of the system if that makes any sense. So I've been here a little while is the point of that. And um, generally speaking my uh, research interests are in very broad and in energy systems and in controlling the flow of energy and we're especially excited about anything that moves. A recent project that I'm excited about, uh, I can think of uh, one good example at least that might be illustrative, is a sensor package that we've been working on that we call VAMPIRE. Uh, it's an acronym that stands for Vibration Assessment Monitoring Point with Integrated Recovery of Energy. And it's a small sensor that uh, goes inside the terminal wiring box of a motor. And when it's in there, it powers itself from the magnetic fields around the motor, so it doesn't need any power connections. And while it's in there, it becomes a sensor package that is able to read a whole bunch of things people are sometimes interested in. So it'll find out about vibration, it'll find out about the current consumption of the machine, it'll record temperatures in the machine, and other things as well. And it's exciting to me because it is a project where we've brought together a whole pile of different pieces of things that have been of interest throughout my career. So I'm excited because it needs power electronic circuits that are able to process the energy efficiently. There's not much available, as you might guess, harvesting it from magnetic fields. So you have to be very um, lean with what you uh, choose to do and how efficient you are with um, capturing the energy in the first place. And then the other thing that's exciting to me about it is it is a model that is more than just where I think a lot of sensor efforts are headed these days. So the simplest thing that you see is just people wanting to put sensors everywhere to gather a lot of data. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's interesting and we live in a wonderful time when it's become possible to do that. But we like this project, uh, I think my students are excited about it too, uh, because the um, particular location not only lets us explore the kinds of circuits and signal processing we're interested in, it gives us an incredible opportunity to do some diagnostic signal processing that's very hard to do almost any other way. And the reason I say that is because once you're in the motor in that position, it's not just sort of an IoT sensor. It is a place where you can watch the motor during very unusual times of its operation. So we're able to see the motor, we know the exact instant it turns off. We know its vibration and we can estimate its speed during that turn off. And so we get something that you don't normally get with a vibration sensor, which is we get a profile of the motor as it's spinning down. So in other words, as it comes down uh, from its operating speed, the speed will just, if I get to wave with my hands, I'm sorry, I'm from Manhattan, so, uh, so everything is with the hand. It, it, um, the speed, if I were to graph it, just goes and stops. And as it does that, you've probably seen lots of different things as they spin down, even a lawnmower, usually it'll have a place where it shakes a little on the way down, it's a resonance. So it'll go you know, as it comes down. Having that speed information during a clean spin down at the same time that you have the vibration information is a really unique opportunity. It's not an experiment people usually set up, or not nearly as often anyway. And it lets us determine all sorts of interesting health aspects of the motor and its mounts basically for free. In other words, any time you turn off a motor now, you're basically doing a diagnostic experiment for me to help you diagnose whether the motor's in good condition or not. So it's a confluence of signal processing and circuits and physics and location uh, that brings together a very exciting tiny system that gives us a lot to think about. So the motors that we're using it on are any motor that bothers you or that you're worried about. And so we have customers who we work with that include the Coast Guard, the Navy, major energy producers with refineries. So in other words, anyone who has a motor for a pump, a fan, a compressor and an air conditioner. It could be anyone ranging from a home to a ship to an industrial operation. 
as a general rule, most of what we're looking at, if you want a nerd answer, is um, what we call induction motors. That's, that's the, probably the most popular industrial electric machine. And we spend a lot of time with induction motors, but any motor is okay. Um, and we also look at, at generators as well, and those are not induction machines usually. So that's a case where we'd be looking at something different, but we'll look at generators on ships. Basically, any mission critical item where mission critical is defined by the customer. So if it's really important to you in your house that your HVAC work and you don't want that to fail and you want us to monitor that, we do that. If it's very important that your steering gear or your cooling pump or whatever it is that's on your system work, we'll monitor that. And so it's a, that's one uh, exciting aspect of this is there's a whole lot of, it's a target rich environment, a lot of people with a lot of motors. They use, motors consume about half, the, half of the electricity that's generated in the world. So there are a lot of them and they matter to people. They're basically the 21st century horse if you follow me. It, uh, they do everything for us. They pump water, they move air, they grind your coffee beans, they start your car, they may move your car. So the, the point is uh, there are a whole bunch of places where these are critical to people and we like them all, we're interested in everything.